I feel harsh putting the Labanco front and center here. What is the energy here? What is the direction? I haven't had time to contemplate myself in the wider universe. You've been here for six months and what do you have to show for it? It's so cool. It's so weird. It's so strange. I love it a lot. Well, if you're going to talk to me like that, I'm, I'm going to treat you nice. I like to persona for my decks like a little bit, like as a treat. Hello everybody, it's Sylvie. Welcome or welcome back to Tarot Magpie. I hope you're doing all kinds of good. Today I am chatting to you about some decks in my collection that need to earn their keep. These are decks that I feel like I haven't quite connected with yet or there's something just a little bit missing. I feel like they need to kind of earn their place in my collection a little bit more. And this video is brought to you by the general sentiment of, oh my God, I need to pack to move and I have so much stuff. I swear I'll stop talking about this house move eventually, but it's completely consuming my brain. So you're gonna hear about it. Also, it's inspired uh, a few videos that I've got coming up, including this one. So we're all getting something out of it. So when I say earn their keep, I'm gonna show you a few decks that I've got to kind of illustrate what I'm talking about. But basically every deck in my collection I want them to have proven their worth to me in some way, proven taking up space in my collection and me carting them about all over the country when I move and all, all that good stuff. I want to feel either like in reading, I want to have a connection with the cards or I want the specific artwork or the guidebooks to change or add to rather my views on different cards and what they mean to me or I want to have a very specific perspective from that deck or a practice that I can do with that deck which is not interchangeable with just any other deck in my collection. So for, for example, The Guardian of the Night Tarot by MJ Cullinane. I talk about this deck frequently on my channel and this deck is an example of one where the cards and the guidebook come together to tell the stories of the cards and the card meanings in a way that really has added to my understanding of the tarot. When I first bought this deck, I thought it was pretty and, and that was why I bought it. it, was an impulse buy, I saw it in store, I was giddy at being in a store that actually had like examples of the, of the decks that you could look through. So I was like, oh, this is beautiful. I was excited, I bought it. And then when I started pulling cards with it, I was like, oh, actually, maybe this was a mistake. Maybe this is a little bit too soft and fluffy. It was my first animal deck. I was like, oh, maybe this isn't for me. And here we are with the Six of Pentacles, which is the one that kind of changed my perspective on this deck. What perfect timing. This one really sticks out to me as a specific card that changed my opinion on the card meanings. So this Six of Pentacles is about reciprocity that can turn almost parasitic if you're not careful. So this is a water buffalo and I forget what bird this is. Let's actually have a look. So it's a water buffalo and an ox pecker. And essentially when things are going well, the ox pecker eats the ticks that would otherwise be harmful to the water buffalo but if there are no ticks then it just starts kind of eating the water buffalo so it, it's it's a fair trade that turns into an unfair trade and it's that idea of unbalanced give and take and that kind of really changed my opinion somewhat on the six of pentacles which up until that point I was I don't like a lot of six of pentacles cards I've talked about this before but a lot of six of pentacles cards look very virtue signally or it's just like sharing and charity and that's a little bit one dimensional this kind of added that extra dimension or that complexity to the six of coins for me and so this deck has a special place in my heart because of that. And then as I worked more with it and more with the cards and more with the guidebook, I was like, oh no, this actually does really tell the story of the cards in a way that has enriched my understanding of the tarot. So that is one example of a deck that has earned its place in my collection. I love this deck for a lot of reasons. It is also one of my, I need a kind of comforting hug kind of decks like I, it lives by my bed and I use it a lot when I'm feeling when I'm feeling squishy as another example the wild unknown tarot I have the little pocket edition this is an example of a deck that just reads so damn well and so has its place in my collection because of how well it reads when I'm pulling cards in a reading and how kind of clearly 
I can interpret them. And I never thought I would get on with this deck. I remember when I did get this deck, it was in a video, is my taste in tarot changing or something like that. I got this deck and another one, both of which have actually turned into favorites of mine. I did not expect my experience with this deck to be what it has been. The art style actually really works with my brain and my visual processing and it's so easy for me to read these cards and I was kind of skeptical because partly because it was so popular and I was doing that oh I don't want to like not like other girls thing <laughs> and I was like oh everyone has this deck and I got a bit sick of seeing it so I was very late to the party with this one but you know it's I think it's popular for a reason for me it really works it's just a really easy reader it really took me by surprise how much I fell in love with it and like this seven of swords with the fox and then kind of hiding this seventh sword and then his little eye on you. I'm not in love with the quartz in this deck but I have a lot to say about quartz in general. Yeah so this is this is just such a clear reader for me and it surprised me with how much of a clear reader it is. When I pull cards I I know what it's saying. It speaks loudly. There is no beating around the bush. For a card for a deck that is so kind of sparse and symbolic it is very to the point and very literal when I'm actually reading with it which is interesting but I really like it and then another example of a deck that has earned its place is the lifelines tarot color outside the lines this one is out of print but you can get the mini black and white one still I think and this is an example oh look there I am queen of swords this is an example of a deck that just kind of hit me over the head when I first pulled cards with it with the most spot-on accurate readings like, you know when you pull cards and you're like, oh, maybe, maybe magic is real. Maybe something is talking to me. Maybe I'm telling the future. Maybe, like, when when things line up and it's not just like, oh, that was spookily accurate. It's like, oh, okay, I'm, like, speaking to some kind of, like, divine source here. That's what this deck was. It just absolutely smacked me over the head with the accuracy and, like, hit the nail on the head and gave me exactly the answers that I didn't even know that I needed. And so this immediately earned its place in my collection because I was like, okay, well, if you're gonna talk to me like that, I'm, I'm gonna treat you nice. I'm gonna, you've, you've got a space for life. Like you're not going anywhere. <laughs> so this, like I say, instantly earned its place in my collection. There was no like trial period. There was no, we were not flirting. We were not dating. We were like, okay, we're, we're for life. So that is the Lifelines Color Outside the Lines Tarot. So I hope you kind of get what I mean when I say decks that have earned their place in my collection. Like I've had a reading experience with these or a series of reading experiences with these or like this is just such a go-to. This has really deepened my relationship with the tarot in general and so I have a special relationship with this deck and the Lifelines was just like instantly, instantly very connected to. Uh, and then I will also say I have some decks, this is the Hobbit Tarot, I have some decks that I don't use very often but I have simply no intention of getting rid of them because they're they're cool or they're pretty, they're, they're decks for the collection and this Hobbit Tarot is one of those. I don't use this that often but I, it's staying because it's the Hobbit Tarot, like I love the art style, I love the Hobbit, I love the, the vibes of this deck. It doesn't need to prove itself it doesn't need to earn its keep. It's a collection deck. I think I did a video a little while back about the decks that I don't really read with, but I still have no intention of getting rid of. And this is this is that kind of deck. Like, it's a collection. It's staying. So with all of that being said, I hope you know what I mean when I say a deck that needs to earn its place. It's all very nebulous. It's not like it needs to tick off boxes, but it's it's a feeling that I get that I'm like, yeah, this deck earned its place. So now I'm actually gonna show you the decks that this video is about. And that was a lie because before I do, I hope this doesn't just seem like my neglected decks video, like part two, because conceptually in my brain, they're very different things. A deck that I'm neglecting, it might have a place, it might have a job. I'm just not picking it up for the time being for whatever reason that's that's ne neglected and these decks are the decks that I'm just like who are you and why are you here and what I'm what am I supposed to do with you it's not like I'm putting them on the shelf and then ignoring them it's just like I don't know what shelf to put them on does that make sense I hope so anyway I am gonna get into it now so first of all who's first the woven path tarot I think this one actually was in my neglected decks video having said all that um but it's it's my channel I can I can do what I want <laughs> 
<laughs> so this was a bit of a victim of too many new decks at once disease. Um, I got this in September or just before September last year and September is my birthday month and also just loads of stuff releases in September so I had a kind of influx of new stuff coming in all at once. I think I also had some kickstarters come in at the same time and this deck just got like lost in the shuffle if you'll forgive the pun. This deck is beautiful. I love the artwork. I think part of the reason I feel like this deck doesn't have a, a place or a job or like a specific, like I don't look at this deck and be like, oh yeah, I know, I know who you are, I know what you're about. And I think it's partly because it is one of those multi-artist decks. As you can see, we've got all different art styles. Each card has the name of the um, illustrator or the artist on the card. So that makes it feel a little bit more, a little bit more scattered. And I just haven't really used it which I think partly is why I feel like it, I don't know what to do with it because it's now been in my collection for like six months, but I've not really used it. So I'm just like, what, 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 what do I do with you? Like you've been here for a while, but you haven't really done very much. And like, that's obviously entirely my own fault. These are inanimate objects and <laughs> that's on me, obviously for not picking it up and trying to work with it. But it sprung to mind for that reason because I'm like, you've been here for six months and what do you have to show for it? So yeah, it needs to kind of, it needs to earn its place or maybe I need to give it a job. But either way, I'm getting, I'm getting messy and maybe too literal with my metaphors. But anyway, this is the Woven Path Tarot. It's gorgeous. I want to use this. I want to know when to reach for this. I want to know what kind of reading I want to do with this or what kind of mood I'm going to reach for this in and I just currently I've just not really played with it so I don't really I don't really know what to do with it because I haven't given it a chance so we'll end on the fool there that is the woven past tarot the autonomic tarot I'm realizing that <laughs> this seems like I'm rehashing both my neglected decks and the decks I can't pick up tag that I did I'm not doing that on purpose but it's a running theme anyhow this is the autonomic tarot I did a walkthrough when I got this I was so excited I haven't tried to pick it up since I've not even like wanted to reach for this and I'm thinking now I'm pulling it out I'm thinking I need to do some numerology study and maybe use this deck for that and then I'm thinking I take the pips out I do like a majors and courts truncated deck because the artwork is so incredibly cool. Do you not think? And the aces and the tens as well. Here, like discs, daring. I can't remember if this is the ace or the ten. It will tell me in the guidebook, swords ending. Like they're, they're very cool and I feel like it could be a bit more oracle-y. Maybe that's an idea. I think this page of discs is absolutely gorgeous. Again, I need to kind of try and work with this in a different way because looking at it just as a tarot deck, I've obviously not been reaching for it. Maybe if I take the pips out, it will kind of work as a bit more of a, like a like a hybrid tarot or tarot oracle deck, which I did also do a video on. I think this could be in that in that genre. Anyway, there we go. That is the autonomic. Okay. Oh, there we go. Tarot of Tales. I did a first impressions walkthrough situation, and then I also worked with this deck for a whole month. It was my daily draw Pisces season. Not that that is, is, is the key factor here, but like I've worked with this deck is my point. I have tried, not like the other two where I just haven't really used them. I have spent some time with this deck. In fairness, not using it for readings because that's not what my daily pull is. It's more about getting to know the deck and getting to know the guidebook. And I came away from that month with still no idea, <laughs> still no idea what the vibe of this deck is or how I want to be using it or anything like that. So this is probably the deck in this video that is the most, that is the closest to leaving my collection. Cause I'm like, well, I did pull you every day for a month and I still have no idea what you're doing. But then some cards like this Five of Swords, I can't get over this Five of Swords. The Empress in this deck is one of my favorite Empresses. Like there's a couple of cards that are so stand out to me. But like I have a lot of decks and is that a reason enough to keep it? I don't know. You know, two or three cards in a deck that I'm otherwise confused by is not enough for me to say that it's like earned its place. I don't know about this one. I don't really have a solution or a kind of plan of action with this deck. This nine of coins makes no sense. That five of swords, I loved this nine of coins. I'm confused. So I think maybe it doesn't have a place in my collection, but I've only had this, I think I got this in February or March and 
I've not had it very long. I feel like I need to, I can let it sort of marinate in my collection for a little bit longer. It calls to me at any time or for any particular practice that I've got in the coming months. Cause like I say, like it's only been in my collection for a few months. I've been busy. I've not had a lot of time to kind of do a lot of experimenting with decks. I'm not gonna get rid of it hastily, but this is the one that is closest to leaving my collection. So, Feldman Sisters. Also, I think I have a walkthrough of this one on the channel. This is, hands down, one of my favorite towers of all time. This is a weird deck. <laughs> it's very cool, it's very fun. I really like the artwork. I don't want to get rid of this one. Like the Tower of Tales, I feel like I'm almost looking for a reason to get rid of it. This one, I'm definitely looking for a reason to keep it. And it's like, it's so cool. It's so weird. It's so strange. I love it a lot. It's weird enough though, that I'm not gonna reach for it very often. I don't reach for it very often as a straightforward Rider Waite Smith deck. Also the guidebook for this one, doesn't give you a whole lot to go off. Like, what's a weird looking card? This is the Seven of Cups, which I actually really like the Seven of Cups for like Alice in Wonderland. Maybe I just need to read with it more. Here, Seven of Cups, fantasies, emotions, confusion, inadequate assessment of the situation. You don't know what to choose because there are too many options. The reverse card indicates making the right decision, overcoming difficulties, moving towards success. So it's pretty standard, like Rider Waite Smith kind of interpretations in the guidebook. It doesn't speak to the specific artwork, which does not help me figure this deck out. So like I said, I think I just need to work with this one because I think it is really cool. Also, I'm not gonna lie, the cardstock is horrid. <laughs> I, I like, it's this very like textured, it's like if a linen finish was resembling like concrete. Do you hear that? It's like sandpapery almost. Um, so it, sh it shuffles like shit and that does not endear me to this deck. And I think maybe that's why I haven't been reaching for it to figure out how to use it. But like this, this funky magician, I love him. What is happening there? Nobody knows. What do I have to say about this deck? I don't know, it's very cool. It's very cool, but that's, I don't use it very much. And so at the moment it's just, a weird deck in my collection. It's not It's not a weird deck that I have kind of a specific relationship with. I don't know when to reach for this deck. It's another one of those, like it's just strange. So I think I need to, do you know what I think I need to do? I think I need to do a whole, when I have time, I need to do a whole like deck interview situation with a whole bunch of my decks and try and get to know them from scratch. Cause I think this is one of those. So Feldman Sisters. Okay, who else? Okay, so I'm kind of ashamed of this one being in this video. This is the Crow's Magic Tarot. It's another weird one. And this deck is in my collection because I bought it when I had the chance to. It's a deck that I've been very intrigued by for a long time. Like, again, I love a weird deck. I love the art style. I love this like digital artwork. And when there was a facsimile copy available on Make Playing Cards, I ordered it kind of without thinking because I knew I wanted this deck in my collection. I wanted the chance to like get to know it. And so I bought it when I had the opportunity and then I haven't really given it the time since. So it's a bit of like timing, <laughs> a bit of a timing issue. And um, yeah, I think it's really cool, but have I worked with it? No. And that's why I'm kind of ashamed of this because I was so excited to get this deck. I was so excited to have the opportunity to get this deck because it's otherwise long out of print, hard to get. Between the imagery, and the keywords on this deck being so out of sync with the Rider Waite Smith. Um, well, here we have six of coins, gifts and bounty. That's pretty standard. But like some of them don't make a whole ton of sense. Of course, these ones I'm pulling do make sense. Like nine of cups, wish, desire, king of coins, dedicated, adamant, ace of coins, wealth arising. Okay, some of these make a lot of sense. And I really like mutate and regenerate for death. But some of these really don't click with the right away Smith. It's just not happening on camera, which is rude, frankly. Anyway, <laughs> I kind of don't know what to do with this, but in a different way to the Feldman sisters. But I think again, I just need to, I just need to start pulling and see where it takes me. I think that's the case with a lot of these decks is that the reason I don't know what I'm doing with them or don't know what kind of place they have in my collection is because it didn't happen instantly and then another deck has come in or I've been busy or I've been focusing on something else and then I just haven't given them 
the time and the energy. Like, here we go, two of coins with cryptic and mysterious. Do you see what I mean? I feel vindicated. That is not like a standard two of coins interpretation to my mind. That is the Crow's Magic Tarot. All right, next up, the Influence of the Angels Tarot. I'm gonna be honest, this is another one that I'm leaning more towards looking for a reason to get rid of than looking for a reason to keep. This deck is visually similar to my Golden Tarot, which I have a more established relationship with. It's the same like existing art curated digital collage kind of vibe. I really want to love this. I think this was in my decks I can't pick up and it's kind of in competition with the Golden Tarot and that's kind of why it doesn't have its own place because I've had the Golden Tarot for years. I have a really established relationship with the Golden Tarot. This isn't currently feeling like it's offering me anything very different. And so if I want that vibe, I just reach for the Golden Tarot. It's a little bit superfluous in my collection at the moment. I do also wonder if I would feel differently if I had the new edition with the linen cardstock. And I really hate saying that because I that feels a little bit um like excessive, a little bit wasteful, a little bit, a little bit something. Because, you know, the artwork is the same. So I don't know, maybe I am just looking for reasons to move this deck on in my head. I'm like, oh, well, I'll, I'll sell this. I'll get the linen edition. And then maybe I will get the linen edition. Maybe I won't. So I think this is another contender for take it back to basics, do a deck interview, try and get to know it from scratch, see how we get on. But I am also thinking this is one that is up there with if it does not earn its place soon, there's no point in keeping it because I have another deck that's very similar that does, that I have I have no problems with the Golden Tarot, you know what I mean? And also any deck that is made out of existing artwork, there is a risk of it overlapping with other decks. And like this, I know from the uh, Tarot of Aphrodite, this is, I think this is a, this is one of Bosch's, an element from, from Bosch's Garden of Earthly Delight. So it's in the Hieronymus Bosch Tarot. Like there's a few where I recognize the artwork from other decks that I've got. And that also throws me a little bit. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of lost with this one. I don't have an immediate plan for this one, but I do want to, I want to give it a go because um, I'm kind of intrigued by the angels thing. I know in the majors, each of them is a depiction of a specific angel. I know nothing about angels, but I'm just kind of curious. I'm kind of intrigued. And the guidebook I think is quite good. The guidebook like tells you who's who, like the world is perpetual. Like the guidebook's really cool. Do you know what it is? I think this would be a really good guidebook for somebody who is just learning the tarot. And because I think it's really cool and like, I appreciate that this exists. I want to love it, but I'm not learning the tarot. I mean, everyone is always learning the tarot, but you know what I mean? I'm not a beginner. I'm not at a stage where I would find this as useful as when I was like a newbie reader. So I think it's, again, it's like a time and a place, like this is not the deck for me at this time in my tarot journey, perhaps. Maybe that's it. It would have had a place once upon a time. I'm not sure. Okay, I also feel a little bit bad about this one. This is the Grimalkin's Curious Cats Tarot. And I think I kind of accidentally forced this one out of my own favor by acquiring so many MJ Cullinane decks. Like I spoke about the Guardian of the Night Tarot, that was my first deck by her in my collection. I fell in love with it. This was my second deck from her. So at the time I got this, it was all good. I was all excited to have another one of her decks. But since then, I've acquired a bunch more and like they all have like a role. Like the Guardian of the Night has its special place in my heart and also has its literal place next to my bed. I use it for a kind of I've got like a time and a place and a mood in mind for when to use that deck. Uh, I've got the Raven's Dream and the Firaxa by MJ Cullinane, which both have their own distinct energies. And I really like that. Like I know what I'm getting into with those decks. I know when to reach for them. Uh, the Crow Tarot is a Rider Waite Smith clone that I do want to replace with the mini edition, but that is beside the point. So like that's kind of got its own place. And this deck has kind of been rendered obsolete by all the MJ Cullinane decks I've bought since then. So I kind of feel bad about it, but again, maybe it's just a factor of like timing. Cause I think if this deck came out mass market now, I might not bother getting it because I have other decks from her and I don't think this is doing anything particularly new or special in my collection. And I do really like the artwork. I really like bringing it out in the spring. I think this hermit is absolutely beautiful. It's just, it's not doing anything particularly unique. 
or special, sorry. Like it's not as much of a clone as the Crow Tarot and it has not so far lent itself to a particular kind of energy. I really like reaching for it when I want something that's not too harsh, that's like, you know, it's pretty, it's not too harsh, it's kind of got that like slightly playful, slightly unserious energy because of all the cats. Like this isn't doom and gloom, this isn't like, okay, I need to make a major life decision, what do I do? This is just like some kind of cat energy guidance <laughs> for, for my day or for whatever I'm reading for. But like I have a lot of decks that do like a similar thing. I have a lot of kind of everyday decks and yeah, this one just doesn't, doesn't really super stand out. And I think also this is a problem because I have so many MJ Cullinane decks. So this one stands out more by virtue of being one in a collection that is otherwise each have like a very specific place. Does that make sense? Do you know what I mean? Like I have a lot of kind of fine decks and this is another fine deck, but because it doesn't reach the same level as all her other decks that I have, like I notice more that this one is just fine. This is an absolutely beautiful nine of pentacles though. So Grimalkin's Curious Cats. It's got a lot to live up to is the problem. That's what I was trying to get at. And so I'm like, maybe, maybe I don't need to keep this one. I'm unsure. I'm also really sad about this. This is the Dream Vision Tarot. So yeah, this is the second edition of the Dream Vision Tarot. And this is so beautiful. I love it. I love the artwork. It's absolutely gorgeous. The colors, the art style is really lovely. I really like a lot of the depictions, but like, again, it's kind of, it's kind of just fine. As I've collected like more and more decks since I got this one, um, it kind of is a problem of too many decks. It's like, this one is just, it's fine. It's a really good reader. I really like it. I really love looking at it. It's not excelling in any category, you know? It doesn't have a particular place. But then as I'm looking through this, I'm like, maybe I just need to kind of work with it more and reacquaint myself with it a little bit because I really do like how the faces and the people are kind of like, kind of alien vibes. Like I really, I really enjoy that. Big energy, big perspective. When I want reminding that I am just a small speck in a big universe, I do like this deck. So maybe I just need to remind myself that it exists. Maybe this is a deck I've been neglecting. Maybe it has a place. I just haven't been kind of reaching for that kind of deck or kind of reading recently. I adore this lovers, it's so beautiful. So yeah, maybe I'm full of shit. <laughs> maybe, maybe I just need to remind myself this deck exists. And maybe I just haven't been wanting to do a lot of small spec in a big universe kind of readings recently. Which to be fair, I actually don't think I have because, you know, I do not need more of that in winter. Let's be fucking real. And then I've been so busy this spring so far. I haven't had time to contemplate myself in the wider universe. Beautiful Nine of Cups. Okay, forget everything I said about this deck. It's not going anywhere. It absolutely has a place. Finally, this is the Labanco Tarot. And to be perfectly, perfectly exquisitely crystalline clear, this deck is not going anywhere. I have no intentions of getting rid of this deck, but it doesn't have a place. <laughs> I kind of don't know what to do with it. Like, I love this deck. I think it's so cool. I love the artwork. I love the colors. I love the guidebook. I love the kind of take on this deck. I love that this is a queer deck by a queer creator who um, I think really like stood their ground with this deck because, and I could be, I could be completely um, misremembering and misrepresenting the story here, but I think they spoke with publishers, but the publishers wanted some cards changed and they refused to do that. So it's stayed indie and is now unfortunately out of print. But like, I really respect that because I love this deck exactly as it is. But I'm always just kind of stumped when I read with this deck. There's something about it. I love it. I love a lot of the cards. I love the individual cards. I think that's the thing. I love the individual artwork. And if I look, a card, look at a card in isolation, I'm like, yes, this is an excellent King of Cups. But when I'm putting them in a spread, I'm like, what do I do with you? Like, what is, what is, what is the energy here? What is the direction? Like, what's our take? I just, it's, it's a bit of an enigma and not in a fun way, in a confusing way. I like being confused by tarot. I am not upset that I don't understand everything. That's not what I'm saying, but it is a little bit, it's tricky in a way that is not fun. <laughs> because <laughs> I have plenty of other decks or I've had plenty of other readings where I pull cards and I'm like what the fuck is this saying and then like I get into it and it's it's fun this one it's it's tricky in a different way every time 
and that I find confusing and, and difficult to adapt to. Like I say, it's, it's not going anywhere. This is safe and secure in my collection. I do wish I understood it more and I do wish I kind of could, could categorize it in my brain a little bit and like things don't fit into neat discrete categories and that's fine, but I just don't know where to put it. It's just like floating about in the ether, like refusing to be even occasionally categorized. And that's, that's tricky. <laughs> so that's the Lebango Tarot. Like, look at this Ace of Cups. It's fantastic. That is all the decks I wanted to show you. Like I say, the Lebanco, absolutely not going anywhere. Everybody else is on ice of varying degrees of thickness. <laughs> the Tower of Tales is on very thin ice. So what is my plan? Well, I'm not setting like a deadline or anything, uh, partly because I know myself and that will achieve precisely nothing, but I am going to kind of keep this in my brain. I'm going to try and put these decks where I can see them when I unpack the other end. Um, I'm going to try and remind myself to, to have a think about these decks, to have a play with these decks, to kind of come to some kind of decision about these decks. And I'm also going to pay attention to how often I pass over them in favour of something else because if there is a particular deck that I never want to reach for, I do think that's like a bit of a sign that maybe it just doesn't really belong in my collection. That's been the reason why I've gotten rid of some decks before, because I was like, you know what, I never reach for this. And when I go to reach for this, I end up using something else. So like, what's the point in it taking up space in my life? So I've been speaking for a very long time and and I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go. Thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your decks are that you're just like, who are you and what do I do with you? Because I think that's, honestly, I think it's kind of funny. Like I like to personify my decks like a little bit, like as a treat. It is kind of fun to be like, why are you in my house? <laughs> like what, why, why are you here? What are you here to do? Um, anyway, maybe I'm just sleep deprived and a little bit delirious, but I think it's funny. Anyways, that's it. That's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. I hope you've enjoyed. Give me a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.